Throughout the book, you use the term coherence very frequently. What do you mean by coherence? Okay, coherence is, um, they've used the term coherence with regard to light. Uh, if you take a, a beam of light and from a light bulb, just like this light here, um, it's incoherent and the, the photons of light are moving kind of not together. And it gives us light and it gives us a little heat. But if you're able to take those photons of light and get them so they are moving exactly in sync with each other, we call that coherence. And we form what we call a powerful laser. They've known this in the steel industry that you can take actually a 25 watt light bulb, get the, the photons in a coherent pattern and it will cut through a block of steel, a small block of steel with light, which is pretty amazing. So now they're using this term, the HeartMath Institute, coming out of Boulder Creek, California, has done a lot of research on the heart. And they're using the R lead on an EKG to check what they call heart rate variability patterns. And they find that when we're under stress, that our heart rate variability pattern is very incoherent. It's like the regular light bulb where the photons of light are not moving in sync with each other. But when we're in joy, when we're, we're in the moment, in the present moment, really being appreciative and, and grateful and just being aware of our environment in that present moment. And I, I talk about it almost in a childlike way. If you look at children that are uninhibited or unadulterated, you know, where we control them, when they're really seeing their world, they're absolutely present. They're in the wonderment of this planet that we're on, of the beings that they meet. They're absolutely present. They are absolutely coherent. When we are coherent, we start producing very high levels of do dopamine. And dopamine is probably the most important chemical in the brain for learning. And so we learn at warp speed. We're able to take in our environment and start to understand it, remember the things about it, and then put them together into a coherent pattern or a pattern within our brains that allows us to take that information and then build on it and create new ideas and new concepts and it's very exciting. Can you tell us about the research that's been done on intention? About how our thoughts, our minds can impact the physical world and make changes? A lot of scientists started working with it and one of them uh, that is very renowned with this was William Tiller. And he worked with a group of scientists where they would set up an intention. So something really simple like changing the pH of water. Now that isn't simple. If any of you uh, have had chemistry, you know it takes a bit. And they wanted to change the pH of water from 7 to a pH of 9. Now that's um, alkaline. And it would take a lot of alkaline solution to change a pH of water from 7 to 9. Okay, but they were going to do it with intention. So these people worked at becoming very coherent and then setting an intention. And they were setting an intention on a little silicon disk in what we call an Elmer Green box. And this is a, a box that blocks out other um, vibrational fields. Okay, so that the box is open, they're setting the intention, and there were four meditators, not and or intentionators, people that were setting this intention. One of whom is William Tiller's wife, Jean. And she's not a chemist, she doesn't know these things. But she does know, as she was growing up in Iowa on a farm, about the fact that she would make lye soap with her grandmother. And that lye is very alkaline, so she would focus on that. And they'd focus this intention on this. Fold up the Elmer Green box around this disc, send it off to Princeton University, and there they would put a, a test tube with water and a pH meter in. And within a couple days, 
the pH of that water, having had no other influence, changed to a pH of 9. Now they did this over and over and over again. They had to do it. You know, as a scientific method kind of thing, they had to get replicability. Now they've done this also with changing the DNA in Drosophila, in fruit flies, and changing the, the structure, the DNA structure, and pick with intentionality. Now William Tiller talks about this then. He calls our intentions, our dreams, our wishes, what we believe about the world, he calls them deltrons. And what he's been looking at is what we have. We, we're living, what we believe is this vibrational system that we have is electrical. Because we see it as atoms, which are positive and negative, like the protons and the electrons. You know, so that's more electrical. But there's another field that we live within and that lives within us that is magnetic. So you've heard of the electromagnetic fields. Well, this is a magnetic field. And it's within us. It's, it's what he calls reciprocal space. So it's within. It's not separate. It's not, you know, beyond. But he says it's out of that reciprocal space that we're able to, with our intentionality, change the vibrational pattern, slow them down. Our bodies, tissues, everything that makes us up, our cells and our atoms, are actually patterns of movement, of vibration, rather than things. And Einstein said, matter is nothing more than energy vibrating the frequency slow enough that we perceive it with our senses. And what we're looking at is that the physical structure of our body is a very slow vibration. And so what William Tiller is saying is that out of this very energetic reciprocal space that is magnetic, through our intentionality, we are able to slow that down and bring it into physical being, into particle, into an electric system where we're atomic. And when you start to think about that, it's been years for me to try to get my mind around this, and I don't know that it's still, you know, that I'm understanding this completely at depth, but what we're doing is we're actually seeing the manifestation of this in the research, in what's happening with these current scientists as they're setting intentions and having the outcome come into a physical reality. And it's very, it's fascinating. Um, we need to, I think, realize that we're far more than we think we are. And uh, in this time, when there's a lot going on, we have the capabilities to really live deeply and explore all the potential that we are. And science is giving us the answers to this. Um, Lynn McTaggart's book on the intention experiment is very interesting. She talks directly about only viable research that has occurred in the realm of intention. And it's fascinating. We really are much more than we have thought we have been. Carla, thank you so much for coming today and talking about your new book. It's called Playing in the Unified Field, Raising and Becoming Conscious, Creative Human Beings. It is a wonderful book, full of fascinating information, and I'm sure lots of people are going to get a lot out of reading this book, just as I have. Thank you, Carla.